By the time I was 20, uh, I, I, I had bought, joined a Buddhist society and very fortunately the society that I had joined in, in uh, New South Wales, in Sydney, the president of that society was uh, very learned in Buddhism and I sort of hit it off very well with her. She was much older, she was a grandmother, but she'd been interested in Buddhism since the 1950s. And a big difference between her and many other Buddhists in Australia at that time was she read and knew the Tipitaka very well. And she encouraged me from the very beginning. She said, after you've read a few books about Buddhism, why don't you read the words of the Buddha himself? And that sounded like a good idea to me. So she encouraged me from the very beginning to read the suttas. And that advice of hers has stayed with me ever since. And I'm very grateful for that guidance that she gave me because I think it has held me in good stead. So I joined the Buddhist Society. Then I, I, I started reading the suttas. Um, I think at that time, if I remember correctly, the, one of the first Buddhist monks came to Australia, Venerable Kunti Palo. He was an English monk who'd been ordained and lived in Thailand for 15 or 20 years. And um, uh, I sort of hung around him for a while and that. And eventually, I decided I wanted to become a monk. Now, I think this was another manifestation of my maybe something dreamy, unrealistic, <laughs> romantic uh, character. Nonetheless, that's what I decided to do. So I had a job for a short period of time and I had enough money. And in 1973, I left Australia with the distinct purpose of becoming a Buddhist monk. I didn't know anybody who was a monk. I didn't know where I was going to go or who I was going to meet or anything like that. And I arrived in uh, Singapore in about October, sometime in October 70, uh, 73. And I'd already read all about Singapore and I'd heard that the, read that the biggest temple in, in Singapore was the temple of the uh, Thousand Lights, or Thousand Lights Temple, something like that. And so I figured out on a map where it was. I arrived in Singapore. When I woke up in the morning, I went straight to that temple and I was filled with trepidation and, and expectation. Wow, a Buddhist temple. I walked in and in front of me was the ugliest Buddha statue I have ever seen. It was just horrible. <laughs> It had a great big nose like a beak, and the skin was all yellow. And there were pigeons nesting on his head, and there were big long streaks of pigeon's poo coming down. <laughs> I mean, it was, oh, goodness me, I, oh. It was a real letdown. <laughs> anyway, I went up to the temple, uh, to the Buddha statue, and I bowed. And, and just then, a, a monk came out with a mop, and he started mopping the floor. And I thought, wow, I'm <laughs> a real Buddhist monk. So I went up and bowed to him, and he just sort of said, yes, 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 donation box. <laughs> so this was my first experience of Buddhism, and it wasn't a particularly inspiring one. Anyway, a few days later, I, I made my way to KL. I can't remember what I did there. And then I made my way to Penang. And I went to... Uh, a large Buddhist temple there. Uh, it's a huge Thai temple with a big reclining Buddha statue in it. And I'd have to tell you that I, I didn't find it particularly inspiring either. There was a monk there basically collecting red packets. I, uh, anyway, I, I bowed and I looked around and it was nothing. But then a young man came up to me and we talked and he said he was a Buddhist and I said this is not a very not a very inspiring place and he said well he went to a particular temple which I might like to visit so I said yeah uh, he took me to Mahindaram and as we entered the gate I saw a tree and 
I said, is that a Bodhi tree? He said, yeah. I said, wow. I was really filled with awe. Wow, a real Bodhi tree. And I went and had a look at it, and, that, and I picked a Bodhi tree leaf up. And that was the first Bodhi tree leaf I'd ever seen. And I kept it for years. It seemed, I felt like I was getting, gradually getting a little nearer Buddhism. Anyway, we went to the temple, and um, I met the chief monk called Premaratna. And he seemed to be a kindly man, and I explained to him, I've decided to come to... Uh, Thailand to become a monk. And he was very, very helpful. He said, well, if you're going to become a, become a monk, you have to learn the ceremony, the chanting and what have you. So he gave me a book and um, encouraged me to try to learn it. And I stayed there for about five days, I think it was. Um, so each afternoon I would go to him and he'd tell me if I'd got the pronunciation right. And so that was my beginning of, of learning the ordination ceremony. Huh? And once again, I remember him with great fondness many, many years later because he took time to help a complete stranger who had a, a, a vision and an ideal. Huh? Anyway, during the day, this other young man, I uh, can't remember his name, he, we went and visited the big Chinese temple up on Penang Hill and some other places. I thought Penang was such a lovely, quiet, sleepy town in those days. So after that, I, I um, went over to Butterworth and took the train to Bangkok. Um, and um, on the train up there, the person sitting next to me was about 40 years old. He was a Thai and he spoke some English. And like travelers do, you know, where are you from, what are you doing? And I mentioned to him that I had come to Thailand with the intention of becoming a monk. And he told me that he'd been a monk for more than 20 years. Wow, I was really impressed. And he told me that he had disrobed recently because he was deeply concerned about the political situation in Thailand at that time, particularly the presence of the American army and the American air force in, the, in, in, in Thailand. And it became clear to me that he was quite very involved in this. Anyway, it took... I can't remember how long, but in the time I met him and we talked and we got to Bangkok, we sort of became friends. I mean, the Thais are a personable and friendly people. And he said to me, why don't you stay with me and I'll introduce you to some of my monk friends. Wow, that was terrific.